Yeah, how's it going, guys? And welcome back to Thomas Jojo. Um, just gonna start off where we last left off. We were talking to Kenji, thinking it's a poor excuse to not be aiding the war effort. And how goes the war? I am preparing. Right now, I need money to help with those preparations. If you want me to loan you money, just say it. No, man, I'm good. You're good. You don't want money. Hey, man, don't look so surprised. It's insulting. I'm pretty big in the comp competitive bowling scene, but yesterday I found some guys who didn't know that. I'm fairly sure that betting would be against the school rules. School rules don't matter. This is a war situation. People these days have no appreciation for what war means. So what do you need this money for? Dare I ask? Non-perishable canned food, building materials, musty corrugated iron and wood panels, first aid kit, camping heater, portable radio, sleeping bag, flashlight, mechanical clock. At first it strikes me as a rather random assortment of objects and materials, but after a few seconds it clicks. Isn't that a list of materials for a fallout shelter? And it freezes. Ah, so you read a prot so you read a protect and survive booklet. It's good to see someone so knowledgeable about how to protect themselves. You don't seriously think it's a non-zero possibility. No, I'm pretty sure that there's zero possibility that ever that ever happening. And again, nothing. He slowly and dramatically raises an eyebrow. Well, as dramatically as one can raise an eyebrow. The chance is, I don't know 0 0.1 to the trillionth place. It's infin infinitesimal, infinitesimal <laughs> besides. Where can you build a fallout shelter anyway? Certainly I'm not on campus. It's my summer holiday project while I'm at home. My dad said I can do it. Really? Yeah, he thought it would improve my crafting skills and manual dexterity or something. Knowing Kenji, his dad probably just thought of it might keep him out of his lair, out of his hair, for a while. Still, it does make me wonder what his parents are like. Maybe they're totally normal and Kenji's just an aberration. On the other hand, maybe this kind of paranoia and fearful survivalism runs in the family. Still, <laughs> a box empty. Hey, want to help me build it? You look like a type of to be handed with tools. If I had your help, we could make a really badass bunker instead of just a fallout shelter. I doubt that. Playing soccer before my accident gave me a good footwork, but I've never really tried my hand at anything approaching real handiwork. I'm not really. I'm not really. I'm busy over the holidays anyway, I'm afraid. A shame. If a feminist ever get a hold of the launch of the launch codes, I fear that so few will be prepared. And your fallout shelter would protect you from a nuclear bomb explosion in the case of that does happen. Fallout shelter isn't meant to protect against the blast. That's what the blast shelter is for. I thought you knew better. My mistake. My home's pretty far away from any major military sites, so the fallout follow the sort of fallout following a nuclear exchange is a bigger concern than the blast itself. What this will do is keep the dust and other particles particu particulates away from me, my food supply, and my sleeping area. It's gonna last me a few 14 days though. 14 days is a pretty long time. It is! I need one liter of water a day for drinking. Two optimally so that I can wash as well. Toilet, 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 toiletry, toiletry is easy enough. Just garbage bags and a bin placed outside the shelter area. Food means canned supplies, of course. Of course. And the radio is for outside communication? Right, right. So I can pick up government alerts on what's going on outside. I need a medical, a mechanical clock rather than an electric one. So, <laughs> in case the electric magnetic pulse from a nuclear airburst fries it too. There's all the other stuff I need as well. I like extra clothing, matches, and candles. I think I still have time to gather it all though. Maybe. As much as I hate to say it, I'm a little impressed. He's really researched this and, and thought it through. Then again, I don't know if I want to live in a post-apocalyptic world with only people like Kenji having survived. It sounds like you really know what you're doing. Damn right I do! It must be hard living in constant fear like this. He hardly ever socializes either. So the fact he went bowling with others is, is in itself something of a surprise. 
This mentality reminds me of a certain someone. Thankfully, her fear of others doesn't manifest in such a, a distinctly eccentric way. One thing I know for sure is that I certainly can't tell him exactly why I haven't been hanging around with him much recently. It's late. I have stuff to do. I'll think about making a fallout shelter or something though. <laughs> Another empty box with nothing? Yeah, alright. That's cool. That man has to do what he's gotta do after all. You should hang out with me sometime, by the way. You're a cool dude. Cool dudes should hang out together, right? For some reason, that compliment actually feels kinda nice. The situation with Hanako being what it is, though, means that I probably won't be able to fulfill his request. For now, at least. That'd be good. I'll talk to you later about it when I can. Cool! Later, dude! He retreats to his dormitory room. I had better go... I had better go see Hanako. And off we go. I stand outside the door to Hanako's room, hoping that she isn't in too much of a state as I nervously uh, clutch the wook sheets. Clutch the wook <laughs> Worksheets Mutu asked me to pass on to her. It's one more reason to visit her, and it gives me something to talk about, so I suppose I should be thankful to him for giving me the task. With a long breath and steady my <laughs> with a long breath to steady myself, I wrap my knuckles and knock on the door in front of me. Silence. I listen intently for a sound or shuffling coming from inside, but I can't hear a thing. I knock on the door again. Slightly harder. Still no answer. How strange. Scratching my head, I make one last attempt at getting her to answer as I knock on the door one final time. Hanako, it's just me. Mudo said to, Mutu, <laughs> Mutu said to give you some stuff. For a while, the attempt se seems just as unsuccessful as the last. Just before I slip the sheets under the door, though, I hear the handle rattling. As the door opens halfway, I quickly try to see how Hanako's faring. It's a task made somewhat more difficult by her oversized gown hiding so much of her body. She doesn't look sick, or at least not immediately so. To be honest, I'd have preferred her, that to her expression right now. She looks terribly tired, and appears to be barely acknowledging my presence. Hi Hanako, would have wanted me to give you these since you weren't in class today. I hold out these loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands. The way she moves is devoid of thought. Her posture is slumped, in an unusual manner for someone that's so often tense and wound up. Even her eyes keeps looking away from mine, doing their best to avoid eye contact. I've moved my head a little to try to get a better look, but she just ends up turning away. Are you... okay? If you're feeling sick or anything, I could get the nurse. It feels almost pitiful to put on such a routine. Get well soon, act. I can't think of anything else I could possibly do for her, though. She seems to collect herself a little at the, mo at the notion, but only a little. Her head remains turned away, but her eyes move toward me. I'm fine. An awkward silence follows. As it lingers, I notice that the sleeves of the cuffs of her gown bear slightly damp stains. Her cheeks are a bit red too. Has she been crying? I see. I hesitate a little before coming out of the words I really came here to say. Would you like me to stay? I don't have anything urgent to do at the moment, so it wouldn't be any trouble. Her eyes slide away from me, and I lose my any hope for any improvement of her mood. I wait for a response, but she doesn't say anything, nor give any kind of gesture. She just stands there, looking away from me. Hanako? She slowly shakes her head. Uh, okay, um, good night then. Hmm. With that, Hanako steps back and closes her door without a second word. More than a little worried, I retreat back to my room. Worrying up the hallway, I keep mulling over what happened. It felt that Hanako was only half there, as if I was interacting with a robot that was just doing what it was programmed to do without any real thought. She was a husk of a person. This is frustrating. I had hoped that meeting Hanako would help the situation, but I feel like it's only made it harder to understand her. How am I supposed to try and help her when she quite literally shuts me out of like that? Shut me out like that. I don't even bother to turn on the light. Opting instead to simply change into my pajamas, quickly choke down my evening pills and collapse onto my bed. And then he died. Of cancer! And I catch. Here we go. Okay, no need for cancer jokes. Something's wrong here. It usually does that automatically. <laughs> wow, really? I think the game is a bit broken. You have to like press the emptiness when there's nothing to show. 
Once again, Hanukkah doesn't turn up for class. Try as I might to concentrate on other matters, this fact continues to distract me throughout the entire school day. And even as I walk through the school gardens to, dim to the dormitories, I don't think today. I don't think today being her birthday is a coincidence either. I don't know the link between the two events though, nor do I have any idea on what she's feeling. Where it's physical pain? I could at least provide some limited comfort with something like this though. I have no idea where to start. I run the pe people I know through my head, thinking about whether they could help. She's an Amisha don't know that much about Hanukkah, and what little do they know of and what little they do know what little they do know can't tell me. They can't tell me. Same for the nurses. In the end, there's only one person that knows Hanukkah well and would be willing to tell me anything. Entering my dormitory room, I notice something that takes me off guard. It's starting to feel familiar. But everything that's going on around me, I'm thankful that this room started to finally be somewhere I can relax a little. When I first entered Yamaku, it felt immediately for rain in every way, from the untouched neatness, neatness to the way it smelled. Focusing back on my task at hand, I throw my bag into the bed as I open the top drawer of my desk. I forgot to do this. There we go. Before she left, Lily told me the number she to call her call her on while in Scotland and I wrote it down. In hindsight, I wonder if she knew something like this could happen. Now that she's out of reach, I realize just how much both Hanukkah and I relied on her for guidance. I dig around I dig a draw drawer after drawer looking for what looking for that damn piece of paper. Eventually, thankfully, I found it nestled under the borrowed library book. <laughs> it's a flip phone! It's a typical <laughs> typical flip phone. Probably should have just entered directly into my cell phone, come to think of it. Without further ado, I enter the number and actually press the call button. Eventually the phone picks up. A feminine voice I don't recognize on the other end. It's probably Lily's mother. Sato? English? Only finding myself unprepared, I realize I can't understand a word she says. Either due to my limited vocabulary, 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 or her heavy accent, I should have anticip anticipated this, since, according to Lily, her mother is a native Scot. Scot? I saw Johan in the hope that she must know some Japanese, considering it's her daughter's native language. Um, it's he, it's Hisao Nakai speaking. An, an enthusiastic sound of realizing can be heard as she recognizes the language. My feeling of relief is immense. Miss Sato. Ah, you must be one of Lily's friends from school, correct? Even so, her action means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Yes, that's right. Please to, spe <laughs> Please to speak to you, Miss Sato. It's nice of her to find someone so polite. Lily, dear, it's for you. <laughs> her mother seems nice. It's a little over-enthusiastic given the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lily takes her time getting, on, getting to the phone. In the distance, I can just make out her mother scolding her playfully for just getting up. Hello, Lily speaking. You sound awful. She makes a sound somewhere between a dying animal and a yawn. The one thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. It'd be pretty late in the morning over there, so she's really so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well? Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished for the day not long ago. Hanako's not well, is she? That was quick. My well, assumption that she must have known something like this could happen seems to have been on the mark. How did you know? Because today is her birthday. I'd hoped she might have gotten at least a little better after coming to know you, but... How is she right now? She missed school today and yesterday. I still have to check up on her today. To be honest, after seeing how she was when I talked to her yesterday, I'm pretty anxious. I really have no idea what to make of it. Has this happened in the past? Is it related to her scarring? To her scarring in some way? Unfortunately so. Roughly the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in the accident that caused her scarring, and Hanako blames herself for their deaths. What she says does seem to make sense. If she's playing with herself on her birthday, she may well be ru ruining what she was never well what be ruining that she was never born. Hanako had mentioned her stay in the orphanage to me. Maybe I should make. Maybe I should take some heart that she trusts me enough to tell me such a thing. Lily, Lily, seeming so in the dark about it, though, almost to the extent that I am, is a surprise. So, 
That's why she lives in the stupid dormitories as well? Has she told you any more about the accident? As close as we've come, she's very barely told me anything of what happened. What I know about it is largely conjecture. She sounds depressed, almost defeated, considering the trauma that Hanako must have gone through. I really can't fault Lily for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems to consider it a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lily. With everything she's gone through, there's a long silence from the other end of the line. I begin to wonder if the call cut out before the voice of the other end speaks once again. There is, is another person, though, that has been a subject of worry for me as, as of late. Oh? I run through the people she could be talking about in my head. The only friends she keeps, she seems to keep very close are Hanukkah and I, though. There is Akri as well. That person is you, Hisao. There's another silence on the line, but this time it's caused by me. Making others worry, worry about me is something I've very actively tried to avoid since coming to Yamako. Indeed, even my interaction action with Haruko has helped stave off my any major health problems thanks to our relaxed and slow-paced lives. Uh, huh. What is there to worry about over me? I apologize. I didn't mean any offense. Sorry, I was just taking a bit off guard. Still, isn't Hanako a bigger problem at the moment? For some time now, I've thought that the both of you may be feeding into each other's more... more worrying habits. I tried to amend this before leaving, but it seems to have done little. Worrying habits? When I asked you about what you had in mind for the future, your answer was very similar to what Hanako has, has said in the past when the question was posed to her. Is it well and good to want to protect her? But I fear that treating Hanako like this, as if as if she were a daughter of some, or someone in need of special care, is only going to achieve the opposite. Ah shit! What do I take? Uh. Oh shit! I don't even know. Uh, this one. What do I do? Do I trust my own judgment or agree with Lily? One thing can lead to another. Is it well enough? It is well and good to want to protect her, but I fear that treating Hanako like this as if she were a daughter or someone in need of special care is only going to achieve the opposite. Am I going to agree with Lily? Or am I going to trust my own judgment? Oh, this is hard. I don't even know. I mean, Lily has more experience with Hanako than I have. I don't know. I could go with trust my own judgment and see where that takes me. But I don't really want to go for a bad end. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll end it here, guys. Uh, I guess you can leave a comment to like what what I should go for. <laughs> Got some really big in doubt here. I'm gonna leave you guys with a high All right. Big ghost. I don't know. Fuck it. Ah! No. <laughs> uh. You sons of bitch!